Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm very happy to be spending some time with you today. If you like this podcast, make sure to subscribe. If you want to leave me a review on Apple Podcast, it would mean the world to me. It is the strongest currency among podcasters. Let's dive into today's episode. I love you. Je t'aime. Ich liebe dich. Ti amo. Very powerful words. And I feel sometimes we use these words very loosely. We say them, but do we really mean them in the morning or what do they mean to us in the moment? Sometimes we say them to appease someone, to make someone feel comfortable. Maybe it became a routine that you say, I love you, before you go to sleep. But now, after a while, you feel like you're just saying it because it's part of a routine. I noticed that it's very important to be careful with your words and to use your words wisely, Ex especially, sorry, when it comes to romantic relationships. What is it that we really want from that relationship? How do we see our partner? How did we chose this situation, romantic situation? How did we choose our partner? Can we take him or her as part of ourselves? And it's a very fine line between taking the person as part of yourself and melting into one person and not feeling individuality anymore. And it's a fine line that we have to distinguish because the danger is if you melt into one person that you one day wake up and don't know who you are. You only define yourself through your relationship. You don't really have like a true opinion or a view through your glasses anymore. Everything is kind of melted together into one person. And for some it might sound very romantic <laughs> when to become one. <laughs> But it is tricky over time when you lose that sense of self. So I love you. I love to sometimes replace it by I understand you. I see you. And maybe right now in this moment when I say these words, I understand you might be going even deeper than I love you. Maybe because I'm a stranger to you. But maybe because feeling understood is really what we're craving when we are in love with someone. We are attracted to the other person. We are drawn to the other person. We're curious about the other person. But what do we want to feel? We want to feel understood. We want to feel seen. We want to feel heard. And what is your part? What do you have to do in order for the other person to see you? First of all, you have to know who you are. 
You have to know who you are to be successful in life, but especially to be successful when it comes to relationships. And not only romantic relationships, but also friendships. You have to know your boundaries. You have to know what you need and want. And then you have to learn and know how to express yourself in order to have these needs met, to feel heard and understood and seen. So what I'm trying to say here is that if the other person truly loves you, they will do everything to try and see you and understand you. And the question is, are you doing your part so that they can see you? A lot of times we hide behind our pain, pain that we had to go through with another partner in the past. and We don't want to get hurt again. Sometimes it is belief systems. It can be religious beliefs or family beliefs, society beliefs that don't make us open up as much as it would need to connect truly with a person. Sometimes it is deep shame and feelings of guilt that don't really make us open up. They make us hold back, they make us have these walls around us without us seeing them, but we keep wondering, why can we not connect with people on a deeper level? What is it that is preventing this? It is kind of, you know, the water on a duck that just pearls off and doesn't sink into the feathers, which in the duck's case is important. <laughs> I know you know what I mean. So it's a very interesting concept, I think, that I was introduced to a couple of years ago, is that you take your partner as yourself. Can you embrace every part of your partner? Or are you still judgmental and scared turned off by certain things that your partner is representing. And you have to go deeper and ask yourself more questions. Can you embrace these things that you still don't 100% agree with or like? Because otherwise it might be like a little sliver, you know, that is bugging you for the rest of the relationship. You have to take the other person as part of yourself. And you have to do your best in order to be open and vulnerable and strong, like a strong sense of self. No, this is not what I allow. Yes, this is exactly what I want. Let's say you used to a lot of physical touch in your relationship or a lot of talking and discussing. When you meet a new partner, you have to make sure that these needs are met because a lot of times we meet somebody and they're so fascinating, they're so beautiful inside out and interesting. And we kind of push our needs away. We think, yeah, that's, uh, that's okay for now. I'm just mesmerized by that person. But if you forget to check in if your needs can be met with that person from the get-go, you're just wasting your time. And it doesn't mean that you cannot be compatible with people that don't exactly need the same things that you need. 
but you have to make sure that you, in some sort of an or another, express what you need and want. And don't fool yourself and waste time in um, trying to ignore these things. And if you express these things, you have to have that sense of self-worth and self-respect and confidence to really ask and see if that person can meet you where you want to meet them. My most favorite question when it comes to dating is, what are you available for? What is it that you want? And a lot of people, especially men, I feel, will get maybe a little bit nervous because they know they can't just say, oh, I just want to have sex, I just want to have fun because that might turn you off and that might make you run away. But I encourage everybody to seek authenticity as uncomfortable as it might feel most of the time. Because if you're trying to manipulate the person or push them into a box, into, into your dream box, you will have ugly surprises in the future. You have to create a very trustworthy ground around yourself and for the other person to fully open up and let you know what they are all about and what they want, what they are available for, in order also for you to trust them, but most importantly for you to not waste any time. And refrain from being judgmental if the answer is something that you didn't want to learn about the other person because it is their truth. It is them being vulnerable and authentic and it gives you the opportunity to be completely authentic and yourself. And again, if things come up that you didn't want to hear, but it is their truth, then know that it is your ego reacting. It is your mind wanting to judge and get rid of or whatever radical thoughts come up. It is not your heart. Your heart always wants to meet people in the middle and listen and comfort and be close. Make that little distinction and seek authenticity. I love you. I see you. I understand you. Are such powerful words. And the feelings that come up when you say these words, when you hear these words, is what you want to go for. And for whatever feels strange, check in with yourself. If it is your mind and your ego trying to come up with strange judgmental ideas, or is it your heart that just is not in a place yet to be opened up again? From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for listening. I will be out there very soon again. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to leave me a review on Apple Podcast. And take really good care of yourself. Bye-bye.